Hey guys, my name is Chris Ignato. You're watching my YouTube channel, so thanks a lot for that. So I want to make a quick video here. It's not that short. Uh, I'm informing you about something that's very serious and it's affecting amphibians across the world. And it's called chytridial mycosis. Mycosis with a C, not mitosis. That's a whole different thing. Mycosis refers to a fungal infection. Now, chytrid, what it does is it basically gets into the dermal, the epidermis layer of the, the amphibians, which is their skin. And it gets into these things that are kind of like our hair follicles and it spreads out and it makes their skin very tough. And as you probably know, a lot of salamanders are lungless. You know, a lot of frogs and salamanders will breathe through their skin. But what they all do is they absorb water. They kind of drink through their skin. So they get their, their hydration that way. And they also acquire their electrolytes through their skin. And the uh, chytrid, which is what you call it for short, makes the skin so tough that it can't absorb the water. So they, some of them will suffocate slowly and the rest of them dehydrate slowly. And it's very highly communicable among the species. So if you're into herping, which is what you call people who are looking for reptiles and amphibians, or if you're just a naturalist and you go to say a wetland habitat with your boots on, and if that habitat is infected with chytrid, the spores will get on your boots, right? And then say you go home and then the next weekend you go to a different location to a habitat that's not infected with chytrid. If those spores are on you, you've just introduced them to that habitat. Also, if you're handling a specimen, say you're rescuing a salamander or a frog or a toad or something from the road, and you bring them to the other side of the road and that one's infected with chytrid, you got the spores on your hands. And then a little later on you find another specimen and you handle that one, but it's not infected, it is now because you just introduced those spores to this guy. And it's all, like I said, it's almost 100% fatal. And in many cases, it is 100% fatal. It is known as the world's most dangerous vertebrate disease that we've discovered as humans. It doesn't affect us, but it does affect us indirectly. Uh, if you notice, there's a lot of frogs disappearing, sometimes due to pollution or habitat loss and due to the chytrid fungus, right? So you're getting a lot of mosquitoes. And also, there's another fungal infection that's wiped out the brown bats. So mosquitoes are running rampant all over the place and certain diseases are showing up in places that didn't have those diseases before spread from the mosquitoes. Okay, Even malaria has showed up in places where it doesn't usually show up because there's just so many mosquitoes. Um, so it is pretty dangerous. Some of the preventative things you can do uh, against chytrid is one, if you are if you find a salamander or a frog or something has these little white spots on the skin, spots that shouldn't be there, sometimes it looks like they should be, but you gotta know your specimens, right? If you see those little spots, report it. In the description below, I'll include a link that describes chytrid. Just try contacting a reptile or amphibian forum, a herping forum, they're all over the place. And talk to them, you know, if you see something, ask them where you can report it. They'll know a local branch somewhere where you can report the chytrid because it's that serious, right? As you know, way back in the day, people were afraid of witches, right? So they wound up killing off a lot of the cats because they were afraid that the cats were either witches in disguise or witches familiar. And then, because they killed the cats, you started getting rats and mice. You started getting rats and mice all over the place. And then you get the plague, right? Spread through the rats and mice. So the plague was yeah, basically a result of killing off cats and other things. So you see our ecosystem is very fragile. One thing affects everything else, right? And so what you want to do to prevent this is get yourself perhaps a mild detergent, scrub your boots off at the end of the day when you're going to these different environments, something that's biodegradable, scrub out the containers that you carry these things in, and always wash your hands in between holding specimens if you have to hold them. And you should wet your hands anyways because they have mild antibiotics in their skin. That's what the moisture is. It helps them to breathe and all that. And so the salts in our hands can actually kind of burn them and it interferes with breathing and all that kind of stuff. So, and of course, absorbing water. So you gotta be really careful about that. As some of you guys might know, amphibians, especially salamanders, because they're so fragile, are used as indicator species for the health of an environment. So when they start disappearing, it means that either there's too much pollution or there's not enough food for them. Um, they are indicators that if anything goes off in the environment, it's kind of a red flag. Let's us know. We got to look here. 
there's often something contaminating the environment or the waters there, usually a pollution, or something else is going on. In this case, it's also telling us that the chytrid fungus has hit that environment. So please, uh, inform your friends about chytrid or chytridiomycosis. Look it up. Try to be as responsible as you can. And uh, thanks for watching my video. See you later.